Tank Tuesday. My name is Bonnie and I work with the North Carolina Coastal Federation to protect and restore our coast. In the last episode, you learned about one of our fundamental goals, which is to protect and restore oysters. Today, I want to tell you about another one of our goals, which is to maintain natural and productive estuarine and shorelines. In this episode, I'm going to take you on a field trip to Morris Landing Clean Water Preserve. Located in the heart of Stump Sound in Holly Ridge, North Carolina, this 52-acre preserve includes 3,000 feet of shoreline and is an important sanctuary to a diverse range of animals. The Federation partnered with the Division of Marine Fisheries to stockpile oyster shells at the preserve and build a heavy-duty pier to load and disperse the shells. Welcome to Morris Landing Clean Water Preserve. I'm standing in front of a massive pile of recycled oyster shells. In our last episode, we learned that oyster shells are so valuable, it's actually illegal to throw them away in the state of North Carolina. Getting these shells back in the water provides habitat and promotes new oyster growth. Well, how do they do that? Well, habitat is just a fancy word for a place to find food and shelter. And to promote new oyster growth, microscopic baby oysters in the water need a hard place to settle on and grow and baby oyster's favorite place to land is on another oyster shell. At the Coastal Federation, we bag loose recycled oyster shells so that we can later go in and restore oyster reefs. Earlier this spring, our amazing volunteers helped create almost 2,000 bags of oyster shells and other reef building material. The oyster shells that we bag, we stack on top of each other to create these oyster reefs. Here you can see one of our bags. The loose oyster shells in these bags provide the perfect spot for baby oysters to land and form. They grow through, providing lots of habitat. Just here in this spot, I can see tons of fish and crabs swimming all around me. After we build the oyster reef, we go in and plant marsh grass behind it. The marsh grass helps stabilize the shoreline while also providing habitat for crabs, fish, birds, and many other animals. Together, the oyster reef and the salt marsh create a living shoreline. While living shorelines provide valuable habitat and absorb stormwater runoff, they also protect our shoreline from erosion. Erosion is a process where natural forces like water and wind wear away rocks and soil. Erosion of our shorelines can be a natural process and is important in keeping our barrier islands healthy, but it can also become a huge problem Traditionally, hardened structures, such as bulkheads, have been used to control erosion, but unfortunately, they often harm important habitats. Living shorelines are a much more effective and environmentally friendly solution to prevent erosion. Let's see what animals we can find in our living shoreline today. Covering the marsh grass are lots of pretty sea snails called marsh periwinkle. You can find them all the way from Massachusetts to Texas. They primarily eat algae and dead plants. They can survive very challenging conditions and live out of the water for days. Crabs of all kinds love a living shoreline as the oysters, sand, and mud provide the perfect place to hide. Crabs have the ability to regrow a leg or claw if they lose it in a fight. They are omnivores, meaning they eat both meat and plants and are a favorite meal to many including seabirds, octopus, fish, turtles, and humans. A crab's shell is really their skeleton on the outside of their body. It uses it as its armor, but since it does not grow with the crab, the crab will have to shed its shell often many, many times. We often see dolphins swimming and playing in the waters around Morris Landing. Our living shorelines provide them with the perfect place to find a snack, such as a fish, squid, or jellyfish. Dolphins are incredibly intelligent and social animals. Large pods can include a thousand or more dolphins. Dolphins can see with sound. They use their telltale clicks, which travel long distances and bounce off objects. This allows them to know how far away the object is and the shape, density, movement, and even the texture of it. Something you're sure to find in every North Carolina salt marsh are fiddler crabs. These cute little guys are amazing. They help keep our salt marshes looking nice and clean. That's because they mostly eat dead salt marsh plants, along with algae and bacteria. 
you can tell a male fiddler crab apart from a female by the size of his large claw. They use this large claw to attract a mate and threaten other males. They use their small claws to eat. Fiddler crabs have tiny little lungs which let them live on land and a tiny set of gills that let them breathe underwater. This allows them to run freely along the mud during low tide and burrow into their holes during high tide. For today's activity, we are going to build our own living shoreline. We took some plastic bins and filled them with sand and water. To build our oyster reef, we used a mesh bag filled with marbles and planted our salt marsh using some old aquarium grass. To see the different effects of erosion, switch out the living shoreline. See what it looks like in a bin with just sand and water. Make waves and watch the sand flow into the water. Compare that to a hardened structure. We recreated a bulkhead by gluing popsicle sticks together. Make waves on each shoreline and notice what happens to the sand. We'd love to see what you create. Grab a parent and whatever supplies you have on hand. Get creative and think outside the box. No living shoreline looks the same. Tag us on social media at NC Coastal Fed and head to our website to learn more about different types of living shorelines. If you're looking for ways to help maintain a safe and clean environment for these animals, Consider adopting a hermit crab through the North Carolina Coastal Federation. Your donation earns you a proud parent certificate and goes directly to the protection and restoration of their habitat. Click the link below to learn more. That's all for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that bell so you're notified when we upload a new video. And tune into our Facebook page on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. to see what critters we caught and ask us questions. Hope to see you there.